can we talk about how the Canucks are three points out of the playoffs right now? Okay, which episode did I say it on? Which I, it was on one of the holiday episodes. We had to do bold predictions for 2022. I said the Canucks are making the playoffs. So every I there's one person who just keeps tweeting me like, "Oh, you stopped talking about the Canucks now that they're good." No, I think we stopped recording episodes. <laughs> <laughs> was the and issue. they stopped playing games. Yeah, <laughs> man, they won like three or four straight. And we were like, hey, that's cool. That's good. Bruce, there it is. And we did talk about it. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we haven't recorded for like two and a half weeks. I, I do love that uh, occasionally we get messages from people. And this is this is rare, but it's like, uh, you didn't talk about my team. Yeah. And, they're on a, and they've won five straight. It's like there's 32 teams yeah, in the man, NHL. We'll, we'll get to it. We're not hiding from your team. We're not embarrassed. It's just that... It didn't look good for the Canucks for a while there, and now, now and it now looks better. And now they're 8-0-1 in nine games under Bruce Boudreaux. They have not lost in regulation. I feel bad for Travis Green. Yeah, but, like, I don't know. But it's the coach's I, it's gig. Cl- it's clear that a bunch of guys quit on him. Yes. But like that, is that not coaching? No, but that sucks. As as just a, a guy whose job is to motivate players, yeah. and the the whole locker room just quits on you and doesn't play up to their ability, and as soon as you're gone, they snap out of it and they can play again? I think like, that sucks. It's an ego deflator because there were probably moments in his playing career where he was like, oh, you know, he's pissed at the coach, and he's, he's like, here's how I would have done it differently. And <laughs> it didn't go very well yeah. at all. Like... For as much as we criticize Jim Benning, the entire time we acknowledge, listen, I don't know how good this Canucks team is, but they're underperforming. And they're having the biggest regression to yeah. the mean that any team has had this season. Uh, I'd also say this. I, I, have you guys seen Ted Lasso? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, so see, okay, season two, I'm not wrecking anything. They say, uh, to, they say about one of like the strikers, they're like, hey, like you need to go back to being a prick. And the and the one of the players yeah. looks at the coach and goes like, "You've turned him into a nice guy, and we need him to be a prick sometimes, not all the time, yeah. but sometimes." And we, I think that the, the was it the Brock Besser quote where it's like, "Bruce just told me to shoot." It, yeah. <laughs> and now all of a sudden the Canucks are scoring goals. Thatcher Demko was good. It makes Ted Lasso seem realistic. This guy who knows nothing about uh, footy is just like, "Yeah, I'm going to manage all these personalities and make them good at the sport I don't understand." And I think. I think what it is, too, when you get to the NHL level is it's less about, like, you know, I, I, for the younger players, sure, you learn. You learn a lot. Of course. But a team like the Canucks, they know how to play hockey. Yeah. So And they've been getting goaltending the whole time. The whole time. So I wonder, I, I don't feel bad for Travis Green. I think legitimately. <laughs> Travis, fuck him. Tra- no, no. I, Adam I, Wild I, says fuck I think him. Travis Green <laughs> probably asked different things than Bruce Boudreaux was asking. And the things that Travis Green was asking were not conducive to them winning. But he believed in his principles. And here's the thing with hockey players, too, or hockey people, is that even when their system isn't working, they'll drive it off a cliff before they'll change anything right. because they believe in the results. Mm-hmm. It was like what, um, when, the, when the Devil Rays were in the, were in the World Series, they were winning and at 80 pitches, oh. they took their, their <laughs> best, best pitcher out and, and lost. Yeah. And Kyle Dubas was asked about it, and he's like, well, you got to commit to the... If you committed to this far, you got to commit the whole way. No, Kyle, you win. You win, Kyle. That's him being nice. That's him be- If you were to get him alone, and Kyle, what do you think of this? Oh, it's fucking stupid. Like, why, why did they do that? It's not smart. <sighs> it wasn't smart. Oh, analytics have gone too far, and most analytics people, I think, are sitting there going, dude, we didn't tell them to freaking do that. Managers and coaches love committing something to the point where they can just show that they're right. And they'll oh. just to hammer it away yeah. until I'm right, well, until the, what I want to happen happens with my system. And it's a sports thing, right? Oh yeah. These coaches, they'll go out, they'll go out there, and they'll be like, "This is my system," and I'm gonna fucking put you. In. It was like Torts when he took over in Vancouver. <laughs> like, well, okay, we're gonna we're gonna make the Sedins block shots and throw elbows and and punch people. No. Well, no, no. So I think in Bruce Boudreaux's case, he probably looked at the team and said, "Hey, there's a bunch of guys who can score here." Why isn't anybody scoring? Ah, the game tape shows that they're passing the puck too much. Why don't you simply shoot? Well, and the players look miserable, and Travis Green looks even more miserable. And then you get Bruce Boudreaux, who could just go, hey. And you're like, ha, love this guy. Yeah. (laughs) Like, he's just, 
I would love to talk to him. I would love to have him on as a guest. He, he seems like seems a fun like, guy. He seems like such a fun guy. And, yeah. you know, he does have, you know, there's the games have in reputation and everything. But regular season and off the ice, he just seems like a genuine beardless Santa Claus. <laughs> he does. And he was badass enough to bench Alex Ovechkin in overtime. Once. And it worked. No, it was uh, to force overtime. Oh, to force overtime. And they, it worked. Caps had an extra attacker out there. Ovechkin wasn't one of them. Wasn't one of the six. He called him a fat fuck, as I recall. You can watch the clip. And, uh, and uh, no, no, um, Ovechkin to Boudreaux, not Boudreaux to Yeah, Ovechkin. I figured that. Yeah, okay. Sorry, you were giving me a look. And then they scored <laughs> I just, and I forced think, overtime. And I do think that's an aggressive. But the thing is, I think Boudreaux, Boudreaux was gone like a week later anyway, wasn't he? Uh, he didn't last much longer, so maybe it's not the best example, but it worked. It did work. That oh, yeah. one time. Oh, yeah? Alex? Yeah, you, you don't like this guy? Here's Dale Hunter. So, Jesse. <laughs> What's up? Since Steve already said it, are you ready to say that the Canucks are going to make the playoffs? Are they going to make the playoffs? Oof. I don't know. I'd have to look. The, let me pull up the standing. The Pacific? Because just... I'll say this. The teams that they have to leapfrog are not extremely strong. Mm-hmm. But I'm not ready to say they're going to make it. I'm also not ready to say that they won't make it. I think they're going to be in the mix, but I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm not sold just yet. It sucks they're still seventh. Yeah, I didn't realize they were so far down in the standings despite everything they've done to climb back into it. Points back, they're not far back at all. Right. Uh, teams back, they are miles and miles buried in shit. Yeah, I don't think it happens. I think their attempt falls a little short just because of everybody above them and the hole that they dug early on. I think it's like a... It's a valiant effort by the end of it, but I think they fall a little short. How about the Oilers hanging on by a thread? Oh, they've been awful. What happened, man? Yeah. They shouldn't be this bad. They have two regulation wins in the last 10. Can Not I also good. say this? It's so hard to judge teams because I cannot keep track of who's missing hmm. on every team because I know the Oilers are basically the Oilers except the worst version of themselves because Mike Smith, I think, is hurt and their defense is a mess. I can tell you if you're looking to see who's missing for the Oilers and you say Mike Smith at any point in the season, you're likely to be correct because he hasn't been able to still stay healthy because they put their entire trust on a 39-year-old goaltender. Uh, and then Mike uh, Miko Koskinen has had to fill in, and he's been very subpar. What is CJ, Chris Johnston, trying to speak into the universe? Every, uh, Carey every Price CJ to show. Edmonton. No. <laughs> no. Close. He joked about that today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. did he? He yeah. joked about it. Yeah. Yeah. But I it's can't not, wait it's to not listen to that show. No. <laughs> Mark Andre Fleur. Yes. That is a thing that has been rumored. That would be fun. Well, that would be fun. I mean, like, listen, the Oilers are already very likable. Mm -hmm. But with Mark Andre Fleury, they're basically a Disney movie. So, well, it's, yes, absolutely. But it's going to cost a ransom. And are you going to pay a ransom if you're the second wild card? The Oilers have to prove they're worth it. Mm -hmm. And as of late, they have not. The rumor. There's that, a lot of I, here's, time. I no, want to no, say no. this. I want to say this. And Jesse, hang on to that rumor for just go a second. Ahead. Here's my problem with that. Last year, they did earn it, and they still didn't make a move. Yep. So, yep. You know, uh, to me, yep. Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl are, are the only it. people I'm asking have they earned it? The rest of you are irrelevant. The rest of you, take or leave. Have Connor and Leon deserved it? Uh, yes. Then throw fucking picks and money at whatever it is you need to do. By the way, they could have had Marc-Andre Fleury for free this summer. Oh but now God. they're going to have to pay like a first-round pick for him. Isn't that wild? Yeah. It's, I mean, I mean well, maybe it's not a first-round pick. They, but you know what they I'm couldn't have afforded him. That was the thing. The reason he was oh. available for free is no one could afford him. Wow. And they simply signed a 39-year-old to a two-year contract. Don't forget, Mike Smith signed through next year as well. I just, I just. Is he? No, yes. I think this is year two. Is it? I, th uh, I, I sure hope so. Man, everything is so weird now because of, uh, so let me see. Cap There's too much information. Well, yeah, and it's like. <laughs> he, Adam is correct. He is signed through next year. Yeah, he is no! signed through next year. Yes. Yeah. You're. Yeah, Mike Smith is. I, uh, I said this summer, I'm year. like, that is a bad deal. And you guys were like, well, it's fine. I'm like, that's a bad deal. It's bad. No. Yes. I even tweeted it was a bad deal. People are like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Go, well, it's Twitter. Bro. <laughs> Bro, it's oh bad. God. So, 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 if, if you're Ken Holland, you cannot look at the Oilers about, uh, you know, based on whether or not the team has earned it. 
Have Connor and Leon, do they deserve it? If they deserve it, then you do it. The time for waiting for the rest of the Oilers to catch up with those two is over. They're not going to. They're fine. They're placeholders, though. You can be switched out. Connor and Leon cannot. They're probably one and two in the league in terms of player performance this year. I don't understand how it could be any other question other than how do we get a new goaltender? I don't know what the price was for Darcy Kemper, but they should have paid it. 